Hey, what's up everybody? It's Thomas Frank and it's almost finals week. So this being a channel where I teach you how to study better, I figured I should probably make a video on finals. And I wanna make it short, I wanna make it to the point, and I wanna help you both study more efficiently for finals and also reduce some of the stress that comes along with finals week. So to that end, I've got five tips that can help you do both of those things. And the first one is to know the difference between your planning mode and your doing mode, or as I like to call it, the robot mode. Now the word robot is actually an adaptation of the Czech word robotnik, which translates directly to worker or slave. And the thing about workers and slaves is they do things, they don't plan things. Now, as a student, you gotta do both of them, but you should do them at different times and you should plan before you do. So when it comes to finals, you wanna figure out how many days you have until your first exam and your last exam, how much time you actually have to study and what all you need to study during that time. Then you can make a detailed plan for what you're going to study in order based on priorities, based on contexts and mental uh, intensity that you can put toward your studying and anything else that's pertinent. You also wanna break individual studying projects into actionable steps. So something like study calculus isn't really actionable. It doesn't really tell you what to do next. So break that down into something more actionable. Something like get out all of your material, review the chapter on Leop Opital's rule or something like that. Uh, go through a practice problem set. Just make sure your list of tasks includes things that you can sit down and definitively achieve. Now, once you actually have that plan set in stone for studying, it's time to go from planning mode and switch over to robot mode. And actually on the College Info Geek blog, I wrote an article this week all about planning mode and robot mode and gave specific examples and things you can do to make this a more efficient process. So at the end of this video, I'll put up a link to that blog post where you can go read it. But first, we have a few more tips to go over. So tip number two is to know the format of your exams and then tailor your studying efforts to match those assessments. For example, if one of your finals is going to be a multiple choice test, then you want to make sure you have a solid understanding of the facts in the class. And a good way to do that would be to maybe build a deck of cards in Anki and do spaced repetition studying or create your own study guide that asks specific questions and then you have to answer them later. If a final is gonna be based around essays, then you wanna know the main ideas of what you're studying and then force yourself to write those down in your own words. Get practice beforehand so when you actually go into the test, it's easier to do. My third tip is to base your studying efforts around active recall. This means actually digging into your brain and forcing yourself to bring forth information that you've learned before. The opposite of this is passive review, simply reading a book or looking over your notes and exposing yourself to information, and it doesn't work as well as active recall. In 1885, a German psychologist named Hermann Ebbinghaus came up with a theory he called the forgetting curve, and it was his attempt to explain how memories degrade exponentially over time. Ebbinghaus's theory is that the strength of your memories is subject to a lot of different factors, and the frequency of active recall is one of them. So if you just listen to me tell you about this guy, you're probably not going to remember him very much later on, but if you actually try to answer this question for yourself, what year did Ebbinghaus do this research, and you pause the video and actually do it, you're probably going to remember it later on. My fourth tip is to review old material while you're studying. And there's a site called kufers.com where you can actually look up old tests and exam questions for your classes. And you may actually be able to find something very similar to what's going to be on your final exams. If you can't find it on Kufers, you can also look at fraternity test banks, uh, professional organizations, and other student organizations on campus. And my fifth and final tip has to do with your stress, and it's this anticipate your failures in advance. So what I mean by this is that you probably are going to procrastinate. You're probably going to lose willpower at some point during your studying. And the most successful students recognize this and plan ahead for it. The way you can take advantage of this and plan ahead is to set breaks in the future that you're going to take. So maybe after 50 minutes of studying, you're gonna let yourself go on Facebook or you're gonna let yourself play a video game for a while. But the key here is that you plan for this in advance. You plan for dealing with the pain point before it actually happened. And when you do this, you're more likely to be able to move past that pain point and get back to studying. So that's it for this video, but I do have a couple other resources you can check out if you're still looking for some more tips. The first one is my mutant guide to studying for finals, which I wrote over on the College of Oak Geek blog a couple of years ago, and you can find that by clicking right there. Also, the article I mentioned earlier about planning mode versus robot mode, you can find by clicking right there. Hopefully you found these tips to be helpful. There are definitely gonna be a lot more coming in the future as I'm trying to make this channel the ultimate resource for studying in college. So definitely hit the subscribe button below if you want to get those tips every single week. Otherwise, good luck on your finals. Use these tips to study more efficiently and please manage your stress, take breaks, and make sure that you are staying sane.
Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my video on acing your finals. If you found it helpful, you can support this channel by giving the video a like on YouTube or sharing it with a friend. And also, if you want to get new videos on studying better coming out every single week on Thursdays, just hit that subscribe button which you can find right there. If you happened to miss last week's video, it's over active reading strategies and you can find it by clicking the moving picture below there. And if you want to find any resources that I talked about in this video and extra links, they are all listed at the companion blog post which you can find by clicking the orange button right there. Also, I have a little bit of an announcement to make. I'm actually writing a book called 10 Steps to Earning Awesome Grades While Studying Less, and it's going to be absolutely free, so if you want to get that book, it's coming out right as the new semester starts in January. Click the picture of the book right there. You can sign up for the email list for the College Info Geek blog, and you will get that book for free when it comes out in a few weeks. I'm very excited to release it to you, so definitely check it out. Also, if you want to suggest any video topics or anything else of the sort, follow me on Twitter at Tom Frankly, or leave a comment on this video, and I will get back to you. Thanks.